Okay. So if it's the if this is the first time that you're joining me, I welcome you. Uh, basically, what I'm doing throughout the month of Ramadan is I'm uh, reading the English translation of the Quran uh, for my own personal benefit, as well as the benefit of anybody that's interested in Islam. And uh, as I go through this, uh, I ask that you be patient with me until I finish the dedicated reading. So that way that um, I can cordially invite you over up on the stage to answer any questions that you may have. Uh, when we approach the Quran, the uh, first thing that we do is we make ablution and also set our proper intentions, which is to seek knowledge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that he can open up our hearts and our minds and um, <clears throat> grant us that opening so that we can uh, obtain that much needed beneficial knowledge to shed ignorance and get to know one another. So <clears throat> we're on the eighth segment so far. And um, uh, before we begin with the Quran, uh, naturally after making ablution and setting our intention straight, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our almighty God, to uh, give us refuge from the accursed shaitan. So we say, A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim And then we say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, which is uh, invoking the um, two names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is uh, ar-Rahman and rahim which is most gracious and most merciful. So we're looking for his mercy so he can soften up our hearts and open up our minds. <clears throat> so we can ultimately obtain that beneficial knowledge. Okay, so without further ado, we left off on the uh, eighth juz, and this is Surah Al-Anam, and we are on verse uh, 111. <clears throat> and on the previous things that we discussed uh, yesterday, there was a lot of common threads, but um, you'll notice that these threads are repeated and rather the message and the argument of the people still remains the same at its root. It's just that their delivery has now changed. So um, uh, we were talking about oaths. We were talking about uh, swearing oaths to God and how to uphold those oaths and so on. Uh, and uh, not to insult others that invoke the name other than Allah, because there's so many different beliefs and so many different religions. So as Muslims, it's incumbent on us not to offend anybody, uh, lest they should... <clears throat> turn an evil eye towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and insult Allah and our beloved Prophet, alayhi salatu So, uh, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to just jump right on in. So this is verse uh, 111. You're welcome to follow along with me if you happen to have a copy of the Quran. If not, then just kick back, listen, and uh, I will provide some of my own personal reflections. Uh, before I begin, I just want to preface once again, I'm not a scholar, nor do I have any authority to comment on the Quran. So these personal reflections are just my own reflections. And uh, side by side with me, I have a tafsir a sadi, which is uh, sadi is a scholar. So he gives us some additional knowledge and insights on the Quran. So some of the hot topics and um, things that catch my interest personally, I'm going to go ahead and expand upon by using the uh, tafsir. Okay, so here we go. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And even if we had sent down to them the angels with the message, and the dead spoke to them of it, and we gathered together every created thing in front of them, they would not believe unless Allah should will. But most of them of that are ignorant. Meaning, there's a common thread in the Quran that uh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that he's the one that guides, and this is probably one of the more powerful statements that are in the Quran, and uh, I would actually say that it's it's really up there, probably like, you know, top one or top two uh, type of a power statement. Meaning, uh, to me, he's going to give you an, an option and saying, I can put everything in front of you, plain as day. But if I don't will for it to happen, it's not going to happen. Uh, and thus, we have made for every prophet an enemy, devils from mankind and jinn, inspiring to one another decorative speech in delusion. But if your Lord had willed, they would not have done it. So leave them and that which they invent. Now, um, after I finish verse 113, I do want to go over to the tafsir because I know oftentimes people complain that their life is hard. But in Islam, we believe that um, it, it's a trial, right? This, this form of existence is indeed a trial. And because of that, uh, you're going to have circumstances that are um, not necessarily the best, right? So you're, you're tested with wealth, you're tested with the loss of life, like children, uh, parents, and all that stuff. And we believe that the uh, prophets were tested with the most difficult of tests. 
So uh, with that being said, <clears throat> excuse me, with that being said, keep in mind that um, we also believe that the tests that are happening to you are an expiation of sin and it's for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get you to come closer to him. So get you to reconnect with him. And remember, people have a choice of either becoming humble, letting go of their ego and their arrogance and getting closer or turning towards disbelief. So these trials and these tests, including uh, the trials and tests to the prophets, are all once again to build that closeness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some people might call it tough love, um, but everything can't be rosy, roses and daisies and stuff like that. I mean, this is this is real life, right? Uh, and it is so the hearts of those who disbelieve in the hereafter will incline towards it, which is deceptive speech, and that they will be satisfied with it, that they will commit that which they are committing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the reason. And again, it's alluding to that test. But let's see what the tafsir says. So here's what uh, Sadi says. Uh, here, and it's beginning with verse um, 112. And this is in regards to the prophets having uh, different types of enemies, both men and jinn. So he is consoling the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's consoling the messenger, Muhammad, peace be upon him. Just as we made for you enemies who reject your message, oppose you and envy you, this is our way. For each prophet whom we send to mankind, we make enemies among the devils of humankind and the jinn, who do the opposite of what the messengers do whispering to one another fancy words in order to deceive. That is, they make fair seeming to one another the falsehood to which they call people, and they come up with flowery words and depict it in the best image so as to deceive the foolish who do not understand the reality of things. Now, how is that conducive to today's environment? Uh, secular liberalism is one of the easiest tell-alls, right? So things where... Um, under the guise of liberty, under the guise of democracy, under the guise of freedom, you know, there's like all these bad things happening. And that's what he means by uh, these flowery words and just uh, making things seem very, very appealing, where they're not telling you the methods and they're not telling you the end result. They're just dangling a, a shiny object in front of you. And by they, I mean the people that are upon falsehood, uh, according to the Quran. Thus, the foolish are deceived by these fancy words and flowery phrases. So they believe truth to be falsehood and falsehood to be truth. Hence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and this is so that the heart of those who do not believe in the hereafter may incline to it. And that is the deceit. That is, they may be inclined towards those fancy words because of their lack of belief in the last day and their lack of sound reasoning, uh, causing them to do that. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and be well pleased with it after inclining towards it. So, uh, so first of all, they incline towards it. Then they have inclined towards it and heard those fancy words. They are after they've inclined towards it, heard them. They are pleased with it, and it becomes fair seeming to their minds, and becomes a firmly rooted belief in their hearts. So the takeaway from that is there's stages, right? And probably one of the um, tall tale stages that I've witnessed in my life is when I was going through like elementary school and then middle school and then high school. Uh, I sp specifically remember when it was like taboo and it was really like kind of looked weird upon to be really close to a girl. And then I remember it was like, oh, people had to like go hush hush and, and go to the corner to like kiss and all that stuff. And I remember when it was looked down upon to have revealing clothing and subhanallah, but, you know, shaitan, just like these false whispers of uh, mankind as well, they now are saying, well, it's really not that bad. And then skirts started to become shorter. Shirts started to become more and more revealing. The things that used to be taboo, now, now the, the psychology was switched to the point where you would be labeled as someone that is a prude if you were not participating in that uh, way, shape, or form. So you can kind of see, even if it not, not even within a generation of how things have just become so normalized. Like for example, uh, pornography was extremely frowned upon, but now something like, you know, uh, selling your body to uh, a subscription-based service on something that rhymes with only pans, right, is, completely like considered, oh, okay, cool. It's a second stream of income. Like, 
you know, Audhu Billah, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that. So that's the it, it's a it's a slow drip. Okay. It's not just like a boom here, all this stuff happened, right? No, it's a very, very slow systematic drip. And as for those who believe in the hereafter, people of sound reasoning and mature thinking, they are not deceived or dazzled by those fancy words. Rather, their focus is on learning facts and looking at the meaning of that which those people call them. If it is true, they accept it and submit it uh, and submit to it, even if the phrases are not eloquent. But if it, if it is false, they reject it no matter who its proponent is, even if he uses the most eloquent and flowery of language. And he's talking about people that are believers. He's talking about people that are upon reflection and deep thought and take a moment before committing themselves to something that can be uh, very, very uh, harmful. And he ends with this, by his wisdom, and he's talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he thereby demonstrates and highlights the truth for the truth is always bright and clear. When falsehood tries to wrestle with it and resist it, at that point, evidence that points to the reality of the truth becomes clear and distinct. And the signs of the corrupt nature of falsehood become apparent. This is one of the greatest goals that may be sought. And again, this goes for any and every field, Okay. Uh, if you were studying something, you wouldn't want to build whatever you're studying upon uh, studying uh, upon falsehood. You would just be in serious trouble when it came to question, right? Especially if you you're in the field of academia, people would be able to see through the BS right away. Okay. Okay. Uh, carrying on, uh, say, then is it is it other than Allah I should seek as judge, while it is He who has revealed to you the book, which is the Quran, explaining in detail? And those to whom we previously gave the scripture know that it is sent down from your Lord in truth, so never be among the doubters. And the word of your Lord has been fulfilled in truth and in justice. None can alter his words, and he is the hearing and the knowing. And now, interestingly enough, I wonder if the tafsir is going to expand upon this a little bit. But um, this is not in regards to, like, the... Um, uh, not just the text here, but rather in uh, something called the tablet or the uh, Malfud. I could be pronouncing that wrong, uh, but it's basically the, the an eternal tablet that he had wrote down. He, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he commanded creation to begin, right? So uh, none of those words can be changed. So let me see. This is what uh, Sandy has to say about it. Then Allah describes in detail, the word of your Lord is perfect in truth and in justice. That is the true in the stories of past nations, and it is just in commands and prohibitions. There is nothing more true than the stories of past nations, which Allah mentions in this great book. And there is nothing more just than his command and his prohibitions. None can change his words. He has preserved them and has given them the highest level of precision and accuracy. So no one can change it. Uh, and nothing could be better than it. Um, so that's the only explanation that he gave, but uh, I have heard from other uh, scholarships um, a, a deeper understanding of that. So if that portion interests you, I encourage you to uh, go ahead and take a deeper look into it. And if you obey most of those upon the earth, they will mislead you from the way of Allah. They follow not except assumptions, and they are uh, not but misjudging. Indeed, your Lord is most knowing of who strays from his way, and he is most knowing of the rightly guided. And rightfully so. I mean, why would you want to follow somebody that isn't upon certainty? Why would you want to gamble anything in regards to the hereafter if it's if it's not with uh, the creator of the hereafter? So eat of that meat upon which the name of Allah has been mentioned if you are believers in his verses, or as well as the, it can be understood as revealed laws for this particular instance. Okay. Uh, and uh, why should you not eat of that upon which the name of Allah has been mentioned while he has explained in detail to you what he has forbidden you accepting that the, that uh, that to which you are compelled? And indeed, do many lead others astray through their own inclinations without knowledge? Indeed, your Lord, he is most knowing of the transgressors. So again, just a, a nice gentle reminder, you know, use your better judgment and leave, which is desist from what is apparent of sin and what is concealed thereof. Indeed, those who earn blame for sin 
uh, will be recompensed for that which they used to commit. And do not eat of that upon which the name of Allah has not been mentioned, for indeed it is grave disobedience, and indeed do the devils inspire their allies amongst men to dispute with you. And if you were to obey them, indeed you would be associators of others with him. So uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us here an example of something called shirk, which is partnership, uh, which is the worst sin in Islam. So uh, if you have any type of associations or associators with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're committing uh, an extremely grave sin and you really need to uh, double check yourself. Uh, and is one who was dead and we gave him life and made for him light by which to walk among the people like the one who is in darkness, never to emerge therefrom. Thus, it has been made pleasing to disbelievers that which they were doing. And thus, we have placed within every city the greatest of its criminals to conspire therein. But they conspire not except against themselves, and they perceive it not. And when a sign comes to them, they say, Never will we believe until we are given like that which was given to the messengers of Allah. Allah is most knowing of where or whom, with whom, he places his message, there will afflict those who committed crimes debased before Allah and severe punishment for what they used to conspire. So imagine that situation or imagine that um, degree or level of arrogance where you're, you're outright saying that unless Almighty God treats me like a messenger and gives me the message personally, I'm not going to believe. And there's a lot of people that are in that situation, which is extremely dangerous. So whoever Allah wants to guide, he expands his breast to contain Islam. And whoever he wants to send astray, he makes his breast tight and constricts as though he were climbing into the sky. Thus Allah, place, uh, Allah places defilement upon those who do not believe. And this is the path of your Lord leading straight. We have detailed the verses for a people who remember. For them will be the home of peace, which is paradise, with their Lord, and he will be their protecting friend because of what they used to do. So imagine uh, imagine having uh, Almighty God as a friend, right? That's pretty cool. Uh, and mention, O Muhammad, the day when he will gather them together and say, O company of jinn, you have misled many of mankind, and their allies amongst mankind will say, Our Lord, some of us made use of others, and we have now reached our term which you appointed for us. He will say, the fire is your residence wherein you will abide eternally, except for what Allah wills. Indeed, your Lord is wise and knowing. Now, something that's pretty profound about these types of verses or ayahs, you're getting a glimpse into the future, okay? So if you just take a moment and recognize that this statement is going to be said, and you are going to hear these statements. You're going to hear these conversations on the day of judgment. Okay. And thus we will make some of the wrongdoers allies of others for what they used to earn. So again, it's a consequence, right? It's a consequence of how they conducted themselves, the things that they committed themselves to, the standard that they held themselves to. It was not by God's standards. It was their own standards. And because of that, they earned exactly what was coming to them okay O company of jinn and mankind did there not come to you me uh, messengers from among you relating to you my verses and warning you of the meeting of this day of yours they will say we bear witness against ourselves and the worldly life had deluded them and they will bear witness against themselves that they were disbelievers now uh, there are hadith out there which basically gives us another insight into uh, the day of judgment in regards to how we're going to bear witness about ourselves. So, um, you know, the, the capacity to lie is going to be taken away. There's not going to be any more lies. So it's going to be nothing but truth. And likewise, um, you will actually see your body, right? So there will come a point where you will see your own body and your soul will basically you will basically be arguing with yourself so for example your soul is going to try to trick allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from there uh your body is going to attest against you and 
let's say, for example, you took the footsteps towards the wrong path of going into like a bar and drinking and so on. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks you, oh, why did you go to this bar? Was your intention to drink, right? Because we're judged based off of intention. You're going to go, well, it wasn't really quite exactly to drink. And you're going to try to make some tricky excuse, right? But then what's going to happen is your feet are going to be given the ability to talk. And your feet are going to testify against you saying, you know, my Lord, we did go in there to, to drink, right? We took the actions of left foot, right foot, got into the car, pressed on the gas pedal, pressed on the brake, blah, 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 blah. And my intention was to get closer to the consumption of alcohol. Then you're, you're, you, basically you're going to have an argument with yourself and you're going to say, why did you do this? I was protecting us. And your body is going to respond with, I don't belong to you. I, I was a gift and this is my Lord, right? So uh, that's exactly how, uh, you know, the vision of what's supposed to happen and how we're going to uh, conduct this type of um, attestation against ourselves, which it's a pretty scary thing, right? So again, we're, we're all in it to seek the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that he can, um, he can grant us his uh, beautiful Jannah. That is because your Lord would not destroy the cities for wrongdoing while their people were unaware. And for all uh, and for all degree, which is positions resulting from what they have done. And your Lord is not unaware of what they do. So let's see if there's some additional insight into, into some context for us on uh, what exactly was happening here. So uh, just bear with me one moment while I locate it here in the Tefsir. The Tefsir is, uh, subhanAllah, mashallah, very, very detailed and very, very long. So we're looking for verse 131. So it starts at 128. Let me see if I can, um, let me see if I can locate the exact 131. Uh, okay. All right, I believe I was able to, to locate it. 128. So this is covering 128. So chapter 6, 128, all the way down to 135. <clears throat> all right, here's what Sadi says. He says, On the day when he gathers them all together, that is uh, all of the two races, humanity and jinn, those who went astray and those who led others astray. And he says, refuting the jinn who misled humans, and made evil fair seeming to them and enticed them to commit sin. O jinn, you enticed many of humankind, that is, by misguiding them and barring them from the path of Allah. How could you transgress my sacred limits and stubbornly reject my messengers? You persisted in fighting against Allah, striving your utmost to bar the slaves of Allah from his path and divert them to hell. Therefore, today, my curse is inevitably upon you and my vengeance against you is assured. We shall increase your punishment according to the degree of your disbelief and the extent to which you led others astray. Remember, concept of justice. Whoever did more wrong, they're going to get more punishment. You have no excuse to offer and no refuge to turn to, no intercessor to intercede for you, and no plea that could be heard. So do not ask about what will befall them on the day of punishment, disgrace, and doom. Hence, Allah did not mention any excuses that they may offer. As for their allies amongst humankind, they will offer excuses that will not be accepted and will say, Our Lord, we use uh, one, uh, one other that is both the jinni and the human used one another and benefited thereby. The jinn, like the human ob human's obedience to him and his worship and veneration of him and his seeking protection from him. The human, you will come to know what it is whose end will be best in the hereafter, me or you. This is the attitude of the fair-minded person in a serious debate. He points out the two types of deeds and doers and leaves it to Allah to requit each of them without stating bluntly or clearly what he will really mean. But it is already known that the best end in this world and in the hereafter will be for those who fear Allah and that the, and that the believers will have the best end, whilst everyone who turns away from what the messengers brought will have the worst end. Hence, he says, verily the wrongdoers will never prosper, for every evildoer, no matter what he enjoins in this world, his end in the hereafter will be doom and ruin. Okay. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and your Lord is, is the free of need, the possessor of mercy. If he wills, he can do away with you and give succession after you to whomever he wills, just as he produced you from the descendants of another people. 
Indeed, what you are promised is coming and you will not cause failure to Allah. Meaning uh, the end of life is inevitable and the day of judgment is obviously inevitable as well. So say, O oh my people, work according to your position for indeed I am working and you are going to know who will have succession in the home. Indeed, the wrongdoers will not succeed. And they lie, which is the polytheists that are committing these lies, assigned to Allah from that which he created of crops and livestock, a share and say, this is for Allah by their claim. And this is for our partners associated with him. So when they used to commit sacrifices, they would uh, so they, they would do like a 50-50 deal. Like here's a little bit for Allah, here's a little bit for our own idols. Uh, but what is for their partners does not reach Allah, while what is for Allah, this reaches their partners. Evil is that which they uh, which they rule. And likewise, to many of the... Oh, by the way, before I continue, this is basically saying that none of what they do counts. <laughs> All right? So he's saying if you want to make sacrifices to idols, uh, that certainly, certainly does not reach me if you're making it with the intention of sacrificing to the idol. Um, and it's it's a two it's like a double whammy right where he says oh the polytheist is saying this is for a law by their claim and this is for our partners and then he says but what is for their partners does not reach a law obviously because it's going directly to the idol while what is for a law this reaches their partners meaning you're just basically putting uh more you know sacrificial stuff in front of an idol which is like obviously happened right Okay, evil is what they rule. And likewise, to many of the polytheists, their partners have made to seem pleasing the killing of their children in order to bring about their destruction and to cover them with confusion in their religion. And if Allah had willed, they would not have done so. So leave them and that which they invent. Meaning, if somebody doesn't want to listen and if they're here just to spread, you know, hate and evil, just let them be. Let them be. It's it. it you know, you don't, you're not, you're not obligated to convince anybody uh, and do anything. You know what I mean? Um, and they say these animals and crops are forbidden. No one may eat from them except whom we will by their claim. And there are those camels whose backs are forbidden by them and those upon which the names of Allah is not mentioned. All of this, an invention of untruth about him. He will punish them for what they were inventing. And this is in referencing to, um, this is referenced to earlier on in the chapter, uh, and it could have been actually even a chapter before. My memory is a little fuzzy today, uh, but it, it was talking about the various types of uh, camels and the various types of um, animals that had like tilling purposes and like all this other stuff. You know what I mean? Okay. And they say, what is in the bellies of these animals is exclusively for our males and forbidden to our females. But if it is born dead, then all of them have share within. He will punish them for their description. Indeed, he is wise and knowing. They will have lost who killed their children in foolishness without knowledge and prohibited what Allah had provided for them. Inventing untruth about Allah, they have gone astray and were not rightly guided. Let me see what the tafsir says a little bit about this, because I think it's in, in reference to um, uh, when uh, people used to kind of sacrifice their female children. Um, they were just upon some just really, really uh, wacky stuff. So let's see what the uh, tafsir says. So here's what Sabi says. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of foolishness and grave ignorance of the polytheists who reject the Prophet وسلم, and mention some of their myths in order to highlight some of their misguidance and warn against them. The objection of such foolish people to, to the truth brought by the Messenger وسلم, does not undermine it at all, for they are not qualified to stand up to the truth. Thus, Allah says, as an example of that, they allocate to Allah a portion of which he created of crops and livestock, and they also allocated to their so-called partners a portion, when in fact Allah is the one who created it for his slaves as provision. Thus, they combine two questionable and prohibited matters. In fact, they combine three, thinking that they were doing a lot of favor by allocating a portion to him, as they believe that this was a donation on their part. Now, that's a pretty interesting insight, and that's some amazing depth to it, because I didn't really consider it that far. Um, rather, you know, I was just focusing on, like, the foolishness of the act that they were conducting. But remember, in Islam, it's about the intention. So their intention was like, oh, hey, God, you need this. So it's not yours, but we're going to give it to you. 
So silly. Allocating a share to the so-called partners who never gave them any provision and their unjust way of sharing out as they did not care about uh, or pay attention to that which they were allocated to that which they allocated to Allah, even though it ended up being for the so-called partners, whilst they did pay attention to and look after that which was allocated to the so-called partners, and none of that would reach Allah. So now we have some additional detail in how they actually treated the portion of sacrifice. So incredible. They 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 were treating things, um, and you know, I can I can actually see this uh if you guys um just look up like the way Hindu temples are um, beautified, like with like flowers and like incense and like all this other stuff, right? So they're they're doing all this beautification of idols, and they actually even go to such an extreme that um, during cold weathers they put like blankets and sweaters on the idols just so that the idols don't get cold, which is so strange to me. If you think that there's some type of essence that can of God that can be cold and I don't know, it's that's pretty wild. Even though it ended up being for the so-called partners, whilst they did not pay any attention, look after which was allocated to so-called partners, uh, and none of that would reach Allah. That is because when they gained something of the crops, fruits, and livestock that Allah had created for them, they divided it into two parts. One part, which they said was for Allah, or so they claimed, for Allah does not accept anything but that which is done sincerely for his sake. And he does not accept any good deed from anyone who ascribes partner to him and another part that they allocated to the so-called partners, namely the idols. If any of that which they had allocated to Allah got mixed up with that which they had allocated to others, they would say, Allah has no need of it, and they would not put it back. But if any of that, <laughs> man, that is so funny, but if any of that which they had allocated to their gods got mixed up uh, with what they had allocated to Allah, they would... Uh, put it back and would say they, the false gods, are in need of it. So it must be put back with their share. Oh, man, that is just too funny. So they would be arguing on behalf of the idols saying like, oh, no, 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 these these our gods need this stuff. So we got to give it to them. Whereas the one true God doesn't need it. And like, imagine they like that worked for them. There was not like a little moment that they had of reflection and be like, how does it really like, come on. Uh, is there any ruling worse and more unfair than this? For they paid more attention to that which was allocated to the created being and took more care of it than that which was done for the sake of Allah. Uh, the meaning of this verse may be that which is proven in a sahih report from the Prophet وسلم, in which he told us that Allah says, I am the least in need of a partner. Whoever does any deed in which he associates someone else with me I will reject him and his deed. And that's in uh, Muslim and Ibn Majah. According to this interpretation, what the verse means is that what they allocated as means of drawing closer to the idols is completely devoted to something other than Allah. And Allah has no share in it. And whatever they devoted to Allah, or so they claim, none of it reaches him because it's shirk. And I, I, had, uh, also, I also had that same insight. In fact, it was also part of the share allocated to the so-called partners and idols. Um, as a result of the foolishness and misguidance of the polytheists, the so-called partners, namely the leaders and the devils, made it fair seeming to many of them to kill their children by burying them alive. They would kill their male children for fear of poverty and the female children for fear of shame. Wow. Okay. Uh, the plot thickens. All of that resulted from the tricks of the devils who wanted to destroy them and cause confusion to them in their religion so that they would do acts that are extremely repugnant. The partners kept making it fair seeming to them until in their view, these became good things and desirable conduct. If Allah had so willed, he would have prevented them from doing these things and protected their children from being killed by the parents and they would not have done it. But his wisdom dictated that they should be left alone to do what they wanted to do so that they would get carried away. Thus, he gave them respite and overlooked what they were doing. Hence, he says, so leave them to their fabrications, that is, leave them to their lies and falsehoods and do not grieve over them, for they can never harm Allah. So uh, just imagine for a second that you're in prehistoric times, right? And obviously you may have heard of other messengers or you may have heard of 
uh, another message. And if you are a pagan, you neglected to um, kind of explore that a little bit further. Rather, what you decided to do was for fear of poverty or, or fear of shame uh, was to follow these kind of devil inspired acts. Um, that is just a whole nother level of superstition. So you can just imagine how superstitious these people were. They had a special terminology for some types of livestock and crops concerning that which they said, um, or that which was, was prohibited. That is, it is not permissible for anyone to eat them except those who we want to eat them or meet, uh, dis uh, meet a description that we give based on their own ideas. So they were selective and they thought that certain things were being honored. Um, and it goes into a little bit more detail in regards to uh, the fabrications and the lies. But I, I think um, we pretty much get the, the gist of it. So uh, for the brevity of time, I think that we're just going to we're going to carry on. So um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they will have lost the lost who killed their children in foolishness without knowledge and prohibited what Allah had provided for them, inventing untruth about Allah. They have gone astray and were not rightly guided. And remember, it's a consequence to their actions. And he, uh, I mean, sorry, I just had to pause one more time. I mean, imagine a situation where you had a kid, right? And if you yourself have a kid, you'll know how serious this is. But if somebody were to tell you, bury your kid for the sake of shame or for the sake of poverty, you'd probably, any reasonable person would punch that person in the face. Like they would just be like, get away from me. You're talking nonsense, right? But these people actually listen. So this is a consequence of their actions. Uh, and he, it is who caused gardens to grow both trellist and untrellist and palm trees and crops of different kinds of food and olives and pomegranates, similar and dissimilar, eat of each of its fruit when it yields and gives its due zakah, which is uh, charity on the day of its harvest. <coughs> because we believe that the this uh, the harvest and stuff like that is a mercy from Allah subhanahu That's a charity from him. And be not excessive indeed he do, who he does not like those who commit excess so here we have another condition of righteousness and we have another condition of uh taking towards the path of good meaning don't commit excess in what you do okay uh carrying on and of the grazing livestock are carriers of burdens and those too small Eat of what Allah has provided for you and do not follow the footsteps of Satan. Indeed, he is to you a clear enemy. So we have a, a sound understanding of uh, the Islamic position on shaitan. He is labeled as an enemy and someone we should not follow <clears throat> by any means whatsoever. Uh, they are eight mates of the sheep, two and of the goats. Two say, is it the two males he has forbidden or the two females? or that which the womb of the two females contain, inform me with knowledge if you should be truthful. And of the camels, two, and of the cattle, two. Say, is it the two males he has forbidden, or the two females, or that which the wombs of the two females contain? Or were you witness when Allah charged you with this? Then who is more unjust than the one who invents a lie about Allah to mislead the people by something other than knowledge? Indeed, Allah does not guide the wrongdoing people. Now, obviously, there's some context that I need to research here because I don't know the depth of, of what's going on here. However, um, the theme is knowledge, meaning that if it's something that you don't know, if I were to approach this problem right now and go, ah, what is all this stuff? No, everything that Quran says has value. So now there is depth to this. I'm going to just briefly glance over at the tafsir to see if I can get some uh, context, but I'm not going to spend too much time on it. I just want to see um, uh, what kind of basic things that we can, what kind of basic, basic things that we can gather from this. Um, but again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that uh, it's about not misleading people uh, by lack of knowledge. So among livestock, he creates for you some that carry loads and others that are too young or too small to do so. That is some you use to carry loads and ride and others are not fit to carry loads or be ridden because they are too small, such as infant animals and the like. With regards to carrying loads and being ridden, livestock are divided into these two categories. But with regard to eating them or other benefits, they may all be eaten and put to other uses. Hence, Allah says, eat of that which Allah has provided for you and do not follow the footsteps of shaitan. 
That is his way and his deeds, which include prohibiting some of what Allah has granted to you as provision. Okay, that makes sense. For he is to you an avowed enemy, and he enjoins you to do that which he will harm you and lead you to your eternal doom. These are the livestock with which Allah has blessed his slaves, and he has made for them all permissible and wholesome, and he has explained them as follows. Eight in four pairs, a sheep of, uh, excuse me, eight in four pairs, a pair of sheep, male and female, and a pair of goats, likewise, also male and female. This makes four all of which are included in that which Allah has permitted with no differentiation between them. So say to these people who go to extremes and prohibit some things and not others, or they prohibit some of them to females, but not to males, proving to them that there is no difference between what they permit and what they prohibit. Has he forbidden of the sheep and goats two males? For you do not say that, rather reject the idea. So I guess now I understand what was happening. Because of the superstition, they were trying to pick and choose on what can be eaten and what can't be eaten. And they were trying to change the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he goes on to say, or the two females, for you do not say that either. You do not prohibit the males only or the females only of either type. So what remains is the idea that if the womb contains both a male and a female, or is it not clear what it contains, then do you prohibit that which the womb of the two females may contain? And that's pretty cool. That's a, that's actually quite an amazing example, because if you were to prohibit one and let's say the female were to get pregnant, right? So like, let's say, for, for example, you said, oh, the male is prohibited from sacrifice. We can only sacrifice a female. Well, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala poses the question, you don't know what's in the womb. And if it's pregnant, what it, how are you going to, what's the ruling now? You know, meaning like you look completely foolish. So do not say any of these three options, which lists all the possible categories, then what do you say? Tell me on the basis of knowledge if you're speaking the truth in your claim. It is well known that they could not say anything except on a rational basis, except one of these three things, but they did not say any of them. Rather, they said that some livestock, which they decided about themselves, was prohibited to females, but not males, or it was prohibited at certain times and other such notions that were undoubtedly based on deep ignorance and could only be produced through deviant thinking and corrupt ideas. Allah had not sent down any authority for what they said and they have no proof or evidence for it. And that makes complete sense to me. I think I'm satisfied with that example. And, uh, you know, subhanAllah, just that type of um, uh, detail, just a small type of detail really does set thing into, uh, into context, which is pretty cool. All right, carrying on. Say, I do not find within that which was revealed to me anything forbidden to one who would eat it unless it be a dead animal or blood spilled out or the flesh of swine. For indeed, it is impure, or it be that slaughtered in disobedience dedicated to other than Allah. But whoever is forced by necessity, neither desiring it nor transgressing its limits, then indeed your Lord is forgiving and merciful. And here we have. Again, they were talking about, you know, which animals to slaughter for the purposes of eating, which animals to keep for the purposes of tilling. And now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a gentle reminder that it's not about male or female. Rather, I had set different conditions and you need to abide by my conditions, not by man-made conditions. And to those who are Jews, we prohibited every animal of uncloven hoof. And of the cattle and the sheep, we prohibited to them their fat, except what adheres to their backs or the entrails or what is joined with bone. By that, we repaid them for their transgression. And indeed, we are truthful. So this is pretty cool because it's telling us that the Jewish people um, back in the day before the Prophet were under a different law. So they had different dietary restrictions, right? Uh, in the same way that we are prescribed to fast, um, our fasting may be completely different than the fasting of Abraham and the fasting of Jesus, right? Even though we're both prescribed to fast, but um, I do recall that, you know, Isa alayhi salam was fasting for 40 days, whereas we're just one month, which is the month of Ramadan, right? So 29, 30 days. So... Um, very cool to see that, right? So there's an abrogation of law. Before, for the Jews, it used to be one thing, but now for uh, for for the Muslims, meaning the Muhammadan Muslims, uh, it used to be something, it is now something completely different. 
So if they deny you, O Muhammad, say your Lord is the possessor of vast mercy, but his punishment cannot be repelled uh, from the people who are criminals. Those who associate others with Allah will say, if Allah had willed, he would, uh, we would not have associated anything, and neither would our fathers, nor would we have prohibited anything. Likewise, did those before deny until they tasted our punishment, say, do you have any knowledge that you can produce for us? You will follow not except assumptions, and you are not but misjudging. Now, this is pretty cool to me, too. And here's the reason why. Um, there's a common argument with people that are upon disbelief that say, why didn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just make us all believers? Uh, uh, meaning that they think it, it's not a sense of like, yes, you can take it in the direction of, yeah, then there would be no test. But really what they're trying to say is, how come you're upon belief and how come I'm not upon belief? And that what they're doing is they're blaming God for them not being upon belief. Rather, remember, it's the consequences of their actions for them not being upon belief. Meaning, meaning that they think that the playing field was not level for them to obtain belief. Rather, we believe from an Islamic standpoint, the opposite, that because of the consequences of their actions that they took, that that is exactly why they are upon disbelief, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sealed their hearts and, and so on and so on and so on. Say Allah is the far-reaching, uh, i.e. conclusive, or say with Allah is the far-reaching, i.e. conclusive argument. If he had willed, he would have guided you all. Meaning, yes, he does have the capacity to do that, to guide everybody. But then again, that ne negates the test. Say, O oh Muhammad, uh, but, uh, sorry, before I continue, but that doesn't mean that opportunity wasn't given. Okay, there's a difference between cultivating the environment and making the environment uh, possible for somebody to believe and just outright, there's no chance, not a single thing would have happened. Look, he even gave Shaitan Iblis the opportunity to believe, right? Shaitan was a pious believer, right? And then he set the environment for him and showed his arrogance. So... You know, for these people that think that they're worse than the devil himself, get real, dude. Okay. Uh, say, O Muhammad, bring forward your witnesses who will testify that Allah has prohibited this. And if they testify, do not testify with them. and Do not follow the desires of those who deny our verses and those who do not believe in the hereafter while they equate others with their Lord. Say, come, I will recite what your Lord has prohibited to you. He commands that you not associate anything with him and to parents good treatment and do not kill your children out of poverty. We will provide for you and them and do not approach immoralities. What is apparent of them and what is concealed and do not kill the soul which Allah has forbidden to be killed except by legal right. That has he instructed you that you may use reason. So again, common theme in the Quran, use reason, use your intellect, use your knowledge, use your better judgment. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had set the pro prohibitions and what beautiful prohibitions they are. One, don't associate any type of partnership with him, right? Key. Next, be good to your parents and treat others well. Good treatment. Don't kill your children out of poverty or out of fear that uh, either shame or poverty, right? Because this is directed to the polytheists. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is the provider and he'll provide for them. Do not approach any immoralities. Like, these are beautiful prohibitions, guys. Absolutely beautiful, clean cut. Okay. Carrying on. Okay. And do not approach the orphan's property except in a way that is best intending, which is intending improvement until he reaches maturity and give full measure and weight in justice. We do not charge any soul except with that within its capacity, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to give you a life in which you can't handle. And when you speak, which is testify, be just, even if it concerns a near relative and the covenant of Allah fulfilled, this has he instructed you that you may remember. So remember, it's about getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and stand up for justice, even if it means going up against your own family. Right? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more important than your own family. Period. Now remember, 
a lost panatala does stress the importance of being kind to your family. But if your parents are like habitual liars and they're bad people and they're committing crimes, you don't stand up for criminals, right? You stand up for justice. Now, um, there's another little small kind of insight that I had over here, uh, which is in regards to um, talking about the orphan and their property, uh, especially the improvement. Um, not only are you encouraged to protect it, but you are, uh, excuse me, not only are you told to protect it, but you are encouraged to let it improve, meaning contribute to it because it's a form of charity, right? And that's pretty cool. And give full measure and weight in justice, meaning don't be unjust with, with uh, this type of property because it's a special type of property. Um, there was something else that I, that I had popped in my mind, but I'm drawing a blank on it. Inshallah, you know, it'll come back to me. Uh, and when you speak, uh, be just, even if it concerns a new relative. Okay, great. Um, that's what he had instructed. And moreover, this is my path, which is straight. So follow it and do not follow other ways for you will be separated from his way. This has he instructed you that you may become righteous. So again, the path towards righteousness includes justice, includes being kind, includes being obedient. And you're going to be obedient for all the right reasons. It's not like you're going to be obedient and you're not going to benefit from the obedience. That's just silly. Uh, then we gave Moses the scripture making complete our favor upon the one who did good, which is Moses. And as a detailed explanation of all things and as a guidance and mercy that perhaps in the meeting uh, with their Lord, they would believe. Now, Obviously, he didn't give the explanations to Moses in regards to quantum physics. When he's referencing this stuff to me, he's talking about all creedal things that would get somebody to recognize that a lost panata does indeed exist and that um, the path to him is indeed the righteous path and so on and so on and so on. And this Quran is a book we have revealed, which is blessed. So follow it and fear Allah that you may receive mercy. We revealed it lest you say the scripture was only sent down to two groups before us, but we were of their study unaware. Or lest you say if only the scripture had been revealed to us, uh, we would have been better guided than they. So there has now come to you a clear evidence from your Lord and a guidance and mercy. Then who is more unjust than one who denies the verses of Allah and turns away from them? We will recompense those who turn away from our verses with the worst of punishment for their having uh, turned away. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of the rightly guided and um, receiving his pleasure and award and not his punishment. Amin. Do they then wait for anything except that the angels should come to them or our Lord should come or that there uh, come some of the signs of your Lord? The day that some of the signs of your Lord will come, no soul will benefit from it, its faith, as long as it had not believed before or had earned through its faith some good. Say, wait, indeed, we are also waiting. So what I believe here, is, what Allah subhanahu wa is referencing is, when you see that angel, which is the one that the people were saying, oh, you know, just show me an angel, show me an angel. I, I, I believe that this verse is talking about the angel of death, meaning the doors closed. It's too late now. If you weren't a believer, it doesn't matter if you see him. You can't just be like, oh, yeah, I, I, I believe all of a sudden now. Dude, no, it's too late, man. He's here for you. It's over. Um, and Allah subhanahu wa says right here, just wait. Indeed, we are also waiting. Like, again, you're not going to change. You're not going to elevate or, or de-escalate my status in, in not, by nothing, right? So I got all the time in the world. I created time. I'm good. Okay. Indeed, those who have divided their religions and become sects, uh, you, O Muhammad, are not associated with them in anything. Their affair is only left to Allah, and he will inform them about what they used to do. So are there sects in Islam? Absolutely. Are they deviations? Absolutely. Are they, are, are, um, they going to be held accountable for that type of deviation? Absolutely. It's in the Quran, point blank and period. So stick to the Quran, stick to the Sunnah. Whoever comes on the day of judgment with a good deed will have 10 times the like thereof to his credit. And whoever comes with an evil deed will not be recompensed except the like thereof, and they will not be wrong. Now, this is an amazing, amazing point of beauty. This is how merciful Islam is. And I believe that I touched up on this like 
six or six or seven um, videos ago. But to me, this is one of my favorite things about Islam is that the game is so rigged in your favor. Do a good deed, get rewarded tenfold. Do a bad deed, you just get uh, recompensed with something of the like, meaning a one for one. Couldn't get any better than that. I would love to worship a God like that. And alhamdulillah, I do. Uh, say, indeed, my Lord has guided me to a straight path, a correct religion, the way of Abraham, inclining towards truth, and he was not among those who associated others with Allah. Say, indeed, my prayer, my rites of sacrifice, my living, and my dying are for Allah, Lord of the worlds. No partner has he, and this I have been commanded, and I am the first among you of the Muslims. Say, is it other than Allah I should desire as a Lord while he is the Lord of all things? And every soul earns not blame except against itself and not and no bearer of burdens will bear the burdens of another. Then to your Lord is your return and he will inform you concerning that over which you used to differ. So in regards to the sects, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to clear all that stuff. He's going to clear all that stuff right up. So uh, just let it be, right? Just absolutely let it be. Um, you know, naturally, you want to deliver the message to the people that are misguided. But again, it's a lost path out of that guide. So let it be. If they choose to not listen, you know, so be it. It's to their own peril. There's no compulsion in Islam. And all you can do is just, you know, take a horse over to water, but you can't force them to drink, as the old saying goes. Um, and one other thing that stuck out to me here, uh, where uh, the Prophet Isasam says, no partner has he, and this I have been commanded, and I am the first among you of the Muslims. So does this mean he was the first Muslim ever? No, right? We believe that all the messengers were Muslim. We believe that there were many Muslim people before. This is rather specifically in the, uh, the area that he is at, right? So this is specifically for the Arabs where um, he was at. He was the first Muslim amongst them. Okay. Okay. Uh, Carrying on, and it is he who has made you successors upon the earth and has raised some of you above others in degrees of rank, and that uh, that he may try you through what he has given you. Indeed, your Lord is swift in penalty, but indeed he is forgiving and merciful. And again, here's the deal. Uh, we're all at different statuses with the lost pound of and rightfully so, dude. Some of us have different trials. Some of us have worse trials. Some of us have like super unique trials, right? Like physical deformalities to... Um, having super soft hearts and being able to take care of others in a, in a condition where they need like lots of medical attention, you know, may, may Allah kind of like give us more of those types of people that are uh, able to contribute such beauties to society and so on, right? But me personally, that's a test that I can't handle, right? Seeing somebody sick breaks my heart, like it really breaks my heart, and I want to do everything I can to help the person, but it it is like extremely heavy on my heart, right? And I'm not one of those people um, to tend to those that are in need, so. Uh, he's going to raise people in higher ranks. The prophets are higher ranks than normal people, right? You and me and everyone here that's tuning in or watching this video in the future, we're all at different ranks uh, with the lost power thousand. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. So um, continuing on with the juz, we did end Surah Al-Nam. So now we are on Surah Al-Araf. And it begins with um, Alif Lam Mim Saad. <clears throat> so we start with Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Alif Lam Mim Saad. This is a book revealed to you, O Muhammad, so that uh, so let there be in your breast dis uh, let there not be in your breast distress therefrom, that you may warn thereby, and as a reminder to the believers. Follow, O mankind, what has been revealed to you from your Lord, and do not follow other than him any allies. Little do you remember. Okay, so this is a reminder. One of the names of the Quran is a dhikr, which is a reminder. Uh, uh, and how many cities have we destroyed, and our punishment came to them at night, or while they were sleeping at noon, meaning it caught them unaware. Okay, that's basically what the takeaway from that is. And their declaration when our punishment came to them was only that they said, indeed, we were wrongdoers, meaning uh, they had a oh crap moment. They were like, oh, no, uh, we are in trouble. Then we will surely question those to whom a message was sent 
and we will surely question the messengers. So both people are going to be questioned. Then, uh, excuse me, both parties will be questioned. Then we will surely relate their deeds to them with knowledge, and we were never absent. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is never unaware, never absent, never in a state of not knowing. Okay? Uh, and the weight of deeds that that day will be the truth. So those whose scales are heavy, it is they who will be successful. And remember, path, success, righteousness, good deeds, all that stuff. Uh, and those whose scales are light, they are the ones who will lose themselves for what injustice they were doing towards our verses. So the decree has come down. The verses have come down. Okay. And the people that are in a state of disbelief are committing injustices to what was revealed. Period. And we have certainly established you upon the earth and made for you therein ways of livelihood. Little are you grateful. So everything from every generation, there was a way for you to commit uh, to uh, earn some type of provision for yourself. But little are people, people grateful, meaning they think, oh, I did all this. I got myself here. It's because of me. Right. But you, you're missing the big picture. Right. It's like basic, basically uh, missing the uh, forest from the tree. It's just really silly. Um, and we have certainly created you, O oh mankind, and given you human form. Then we said to the angels, prostrate to Adam. So they prostrated, except for Iblis. He was not of those who prostrated. So here we have a differentiation in creation. We have, he said, we said to the angels, prostrate to Adam. So they prostrated, except for Iblis, <coughs> which tells us that Iblis was not an angel. He was not of those who prostrated because only the angels prostrated. Okay, so different type of creation. We, we don't believe that the devil is a fallen angel and all that jazz. Allah said, what prevented you from prostrating when I commanded you? Satan said, I am better than him. You created me from fire and created him from clay, which is earth. Now, I just want to pause here. This is another one of my favorite verses of the Quran. <coughs> Excuse me. It's another one of my favorite verses of the Quran. And here's why. I actually put a short about this um, just today, as a matter of fact. Uh, Satan is the world's first racist. Okay. So he says, I'm better than him. I'm made from fire and you made him from clay. And if you have a situation where somebody's saying, oh, I'm white or, or oh, I'm black and white is superior to black and black is superior to white, you're racist. Okay, so the world's first racist is indeed shaitan. And then it may not be here. I'm going to find out when I read just a little bit longer. But and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, and let's see what he says. I don't want to. I don't want to give it away because it's pretty juicy. He says, "Descend from it, which is paradise, for it is not for you to be arrogant therein. So get out. Indeed, you are of the debased. Reprieve." And, and then, okay. So now, um, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala tells us that Iblis is an enemy to us, which means that what he stands for is an enemy to us. And if he stands for racism, racism is an enemy to us. Okay, as mankind, as mankind. Okay, so Las Panathana says, descend from it, which is paradise, for it is not for you to be arrogant therein. So get out, indeed, you are of the debased. Satan said, reprieve me until the day they are resurrected. So here's the devil begging God, basically, right? He's begging, he's reprieve me, give me, give me reprieve, please, right? So does Satan have any power over God? Absolutely not. Satan said, because, uh, Satan said, because, excuse me, uh, Allah said, indeed, you are of those reprieved. So he gave him time. Satan says, because you have put me in error, I will surely sit and wait for them, which is mankind on your straight path. Now, here's the difference between Iblis, which is Satan, and, uh, and Adam. Satan blames God for putting him in error. So he says, you did this. You caused me to trip up. You set me up. Okay. Now, <clears throat> does that sound familiar of, of, of people that think this way? Well, God did this. God is doing all this wrong. How could God let all these atrocities happen? He's responsible for all this stuff. Blah, 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 blah. This is the words of Satan. It's just if you fast forward 1400 years, they're just being repackaged differently, period. 
then I will come to them. Here he says, then I will come to them from before them and from behind them and on their right and on their left. And you will not find most of them grateful to you. So Iblis is telling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, exactly what he's going to do. And he's telling you exactly what he is going to do. He's going to come at you from all angles, meaning he's looking for a weak spot. He doesn't know what it is. He didn't He didn't just say, oh, I'm surely going to come from the right because they're definitely weak on the right. So I'm just going to persist in doing this. No, 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 no. He says, I'm going to do this and this and this and this, which is basically saying I'm going to guess here. And then if that doesn't work, I'm going to guess here. And if that doesn't work, I'm going to guess here until, until I find a weak spot. And then when he finds your weak spot, depending on what it is, jealousy, uh, envy, greed, gluttony, you know, blah, 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 arrogance, blah, 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 blah. I don't want to, you know, keep giving you guys like a, you know, a bunch of stuff, but just reflect on that, meaning know who you are and then recognize that if you are feeding into that weakness of yours, uh, Iblis has found it and now he's exploiting it. Okay. Carrying on, Allah says, depart from it, which is paradise, reproached and expelled. Whoever follows you among them, I will surely fill with hell. Uh, I will surely fill hell with you altogether. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no problem. Uh, got it. Get out. And anybody that follows your footsteps and succumbs to that weakness, meaning doesn't turn to me for protection and follow the path of righteousness and justice, uh, justice and, and so on and so on and so on. Both of you guys are going to go in there. It's not a problem for me. Okay. And O oh Adam, dwell you and your wife in paradise and eat from wherever you will, but do not approach this tree lest you be among the wrongdoers. Now notice the difference um, between the Quranic perspective and the biblical perspective, right? The Quranic perspective is basically just like, look, uh, don't go to that tree over there. It doesn't matter which one it was. Rather, it's the curiosity that's going to build, Okay. And now comes the next phase, right? Which is um, committing that uh, act of transgression because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, don't do that. Meaning he put a line in the sand, you cross the line. Now we believe that we were created for worship. So naturally what's gonna happen is there's gonna have to be some type of consequence to violating that line. So let's read what the Quran says. But Satan whispered to them to make that make apparent to them that which was concealed from them of their private parts. He said, your Lord did not forbid you this tree, except that you become angels or become of the immortal. And he swore by Allah to them, indeed, I am to you from among the sincere advisors. So he, he made them fall through deception. And when they tasted of the tree, their private parts became apparent to them. And they uh, began to fasten uh, together over themselves from the leaves of paradise. And their Lord called to them, did I not forbid you from that tree and tell you that Satan to you is a clear enemy? So here's the deal. Remember, the situation was was made, the line was drawn in the sand so mankind can commit the transgression. The lesson and the key takeaway is how you react from committing this transgression. Satan blames God, okay? And we will come to see what happens with uh, what Adam does and what's different at, in Adam's approach. But here you have Satan telling you that he's a clear advisor and everything that he told them was the exact opposite, meaning it was a lie. He's a deceiver. OK, so he exploited their weakness of curiosity, not only for the purposes of trying to get them in trouble, but for trying to advance himself, meaning he was trying to prove to God, look, I, didn't I tell you so? Dude, God's all knowing. He already knows what these people are going to do. Of course, he made this test. And of course, these people are going to cross that line. But Satan is so short sighted and he doesn't know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us what our key takeaway is. And here's the key takeaway. And this is the difference in Islam compared to other religions. They said, they said, and this is uh, Adam and Eve. Our Lord, we have wronged ourselves, and if you do not forgive us and have mercy upon us, we will surely be among the losers. So now here's the deal. The winners are the ones that recognize that it was by their own actions, by their own actions, 
that the consequences came to be. But Alhamdulillah, thank God, Adam gives us the key on what to do. Meaning if you're going to falter, it's not a problem if you don't blame God. If you falter and you blame God, you're going to end up like Satan. If you falter and blame yourself by recognizing your own humanity, which is perfectly fine, and then turn towards God asking for repentance, asking for repentance, you will receive it. Because the entire Quran perpetually mentions mercy and doors of mercy and things being uh, opened up for you. So Alhamdulillah, this is the, the Lord that we worship, right? This all merciful, uh, all powerful Lord, right? Uh, excuse me, the mo most merciful, most powerful Lord. Allah said, descend being uh, to one another enemies. And for you on earth is a place of settlement and enjoyment provisions for a time. So here's the deal. Yes, you guys messed up. Don't worry about it. Just descend on down. Cool. You've got provisions. You've got a time being. The earth is a place of settlement. It's also a place of enjoyment. And there's going to be guidance, but recognize who your clear enemy is. Now, recognize, don't do it again. Meaning, if you do do it again, if you falter, no problem. The doors of mercy are always open. However, learn from your mistake. Okay. Now, um, wise people will learn from the mistakes of others. They're not just going to learn from their own mistakes. Okay. Now, we can learn from the mistake of Adam on how we approach stuff. Uh, carrying on. He said, therein you will live and therein you will die. And from it, you will be brought forth. Okay. So you're going to live for a time. You're going to have provisions. You're going to have enjoyment. Then you're going to pass away. And then you're going to be brought back. Period. Oh, children of Adam. So this is us. This is you. This is me. Uh, both believing and disbelieving. We have bestowed upon you clothing to conceal your private parts and as adornment. But the clothing of righteousness, that is best. That is from the signs of Allah that perhaps they will remember. O oh, children of Adam, again, that's us. Let not Satan tempt you as he removed your parents from paradise, stripping them of their clothing, which is their innocence, right? They were at, at, at one point, they were innocent. And then because of their actions and transgressions, they lost their innocence to show them their private parts. Indeed, he sees you, he and his tribe from where you do not see them, meaning it, the, the jinn are in a different type of existence. They can see us, but we can't see them. Indeed, he sees you and, 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 and he and his tribe. So there's other shayateen. It's not just one big Satan guy that's doing all this stuff. No, that's not the Islamic position. Okay. From where uh, you do not see them. Indeed, we have made the devils allies to those who do not believe. So alliances are formed. Now you need to form positive alliances, meaning check your surroundings, check who your friends are, check where you're spending your time, uh, check where you're, where, where you're parking your brain. Like for the people that are here you know, tonight, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and protect you, but you're parking your brain in studying his, his book, right? Uh, there's other people that are parking their brain in drugs, uh, you know, all sorts of just stupid things, right? And those are their allies. And when they commit, uh, and when they commit an immorality, they say, we found our fathers doing it, and Allah has ordered us to do it. So indeed, Allah does not order immorality. Do you say about Allah that which you do not know? Meaning that if you if you're speaking without knowledge, shut up. Kick back, listen, study, read a book, figure it out. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would never instruct you to commit an immorality, right? Period. Say, O Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, my Lord has ordered justice and that you direct yourself to the Qibla at every place or time of prostration and invoke him, sincere to him in religion just as he ordained, uh, originated you, you will return to life, meaning there's an afterlife. Uh, a group of you he guided and a group deserved to be in error. Remember, deserved to be, so consequences of actions. Indeed, they, i.e. the latter, had taken the devils as allies and set up a law while they thought that they were guided. Now, again, this doesn't mean that just because, you know, you're a Muslim, you're not allowed to have fun. You can have all sorts of fun in the world. It just has to be permissible to styles of fun. Anytime that it goes into transgression, 
you you are now following those uh, that uh, you know are categorized as as allies of uh, Shaitan. O oh, children of Adam, take your adorn, uh, adornment, which is uh, i.e. wear your clothing at at every masjid and eat and drink, but do not uh, but be not excessive. Again, have your fill. Don't overtake too much. Um, indeed, he likes those who commit. He he likes not those who commit excess. And you know, I've I've had it put to me like this at one point in time. There's people that are coming. They're going to come into this world, and it's like a party. Everybody's been invited. Okay, and Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala had set the, a balance to everything. There's going to be people that come to the party that eat from the plates that clean up after themselves and that they prepare the plate for the next person. This is someone who is taking the middle way. Then there's going to be people that come to the party that eat just a little, have a bunch of leftovers and throw it away, throw, throw the leftovers away, meaning they're not being, they're not saving any of the food. Then there's going to be people that come in, they drink too much. Then there's going to be people that come in that don't clean up after themselves. They'll eat the just amount, but they don't clean up after themselves. Then there's going to be people that come to the party that steal the silverware, that steal the plates. These are all the different types of people. And because of that, now you can kind of see how societally everything gets jacked up. But at one point in time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set a clean balance and everybody had a plate. Everybody had justice, period. Okay. Uh, say, who has forbidden the adornment of, i.e., from Allah, which he has produced for his servants and the good lawful things of provision? Say, they are for those who believed during the life of this world exclusively for them on the day of resurrection. Thus do we detail the verses of a people who know. Say, my Lord has only forbidden immoralities, what is apparent of them and what is concealed and sin and oppression without right, and that you associate with Allah that for which he has not sent down authority, and that you say about Allah that, that which you do not know. I mean, this is just this is just beautiful right here. Straight up, forbidden immoralities, forbidden the concealment of sin or the apparent sin, forbidden oppression, forbidden things that are um, not just, meaning without right, uh, and forbidden is the association of anything to God. Like how much how much cleaner can that get? How much more obvious can that get? Uh, and for every nation is a specified term. So when their time has come, they will not remain behind an hour, nor will they precede it. Meaning when your time's up, your time's up. That's that. O oh, children of Adam, if there came to you messengers from among you relating to you my verses, i.e. scriptures and laws, then whoever fears Allah and reforms, there will be no fear concerning them, nor will they grieve. So again, here's another guarantee yet again. But the ones who deny our verses and are arrogant towards them, those are the companions of the fire. They will abide therein eternally. If you see people that are upon arrogance, be mindful not to become like that and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide them. And who is more unjust than one who invents about Allah a lie or denies his verses? Those will attain their portion of the decree until when our messengers, i.e. the angels, come to them to take them in death. They will say, where are those you used to invoke beside Allah? They will say they have departed from us and will bear witness against themselves that they were disbelievers. Meaning there's no protectors. There's no... Uh, you know, intercessors, there's nobody. There's just you, and there's going to be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or Almighty God on the day of judgment. And what a terrible, terrible state to be in um, if you're in a state of disbelief. Allah will say, Enter among nations which had passed on before you of jinn and mankind into the fire. Every time a nation enters it, will curse its sister until when they have all overtaken one another. Therein the last of them will say about the first of them, our Lord, these had misled us, so give them a double punishment of the fire. He will say, for each is double, but you do not know. Meaning each generation, uh, these are the reverberating consequences, right? Meaning the people did not take the time to conduct their own uh, due diligence. They just believed 
their forefathers. They believed the nation before them, the generation before them. And they took it for face value, thinking like, you know what, we're good, we're set. It's not the way. It's just such an insult to your mind and to your intellect. It's just really, really, really like not the way to go. And the first of them will say to the last of them, then you had uh, then you had not any favor over us. So taste the punishment for what you used to earn, meaning both of them are going to get doubly punishment, uh, double punishment because they both equally deserved it. At any point in time, either one of them could have broken the chain. People could have woken up and said, you know what, this has gone far enough. But they didn't. They perpetuated it. Remember, the, the, the idea here is that the door of repentance is always open, but people perpetually chose the opposite way. That's what really just blows my mind, that there's people out there that exist, that literally do this. I mean, I talk to them all the time, but it's, it's just really wild, right? Indeed, those who deny our verses and are arrogant towards them, the gates of heaven will not be open for them, nor will they enter paradise until a camel enters into the eye of a needle, which is never. And thus do we recompense the criminals. Uh, they will have from hell a bed and over them coverings of fire, and thus do we recompense the wrongdoers. But those who believed and did righteous deeds, we charge no soul except within its capacity. Those are the companions of paradise. They will abide therein eternally. And we will have removed whatever is within their breasts of resentment while flowing beneath them are rivers. And they will say praise to Allah who has guided us to this. And we would never have been guided if Allah had not guided us. Certainly the messengers of our Lord had come with truth and they will be called this is paradise, which you have been made to inherit for what you used to do, meaning the commitment to themselves, the commitment to truth, the commitment to righteousness, justice, and all the good things that lead somebody to being a good person. This is your reward. And the companions of paradise will call out to the companions of the fire. We have already found what our Lord promised us to be true. Have you found what your Lord has promised to be true? They will say yes. Then an announcer will announce among them, the curse of Allah shall be upon the wrongdoers who averted people from the way of Allah and sought to make it seem deviant while they were concerning the hereafter disbelievers. And between them will be a partition or a wall. And on its elevations are men who recognize all by their mark. And they call out to the companions of paradise, peace be upon you. They have not yet entered it but they long intensely. And when their eyes are turned towards the companions of the fire, they say, our Lord, do not place us with the wrongdoing people, meaning the believing people now want to be completely separated from the wrongdoers. Like, yo, don't put us over there. We don't want to go anywhere near those guys. And the companions of the elevations will call to the men within hell, whom they recognize by their mark, saying, of no avail to you was your gathering and the fact that you were arrogant. So again, here is a characteristic of somebody, arrogance. Allah will say, are these the ones whom you, inhabitants of hell, swore that Allah would never offer them mercy? Enter paradise, O people of the elevations. No fear will there be concerning you, nor will you grieve. So the people that were just, good character, asked for repentance, blamed themselves on their own actions, took responsibility, accountability, yada, 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 yada. Here you go. And oh, by the way, you guys who used to mock, laugh, belittle, uh, fight, argue, blah, 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 blah. Just watch them enter into that place. And the companions of the fire will call to the companions of paradise, pour upon us some water or from whatever Allah has provided you. They will say, indeed, Allah has forbidden them both to the disbelievers. So meaning you're forbidden water and anything else that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided the righteous people. <coughs> what a, a grand state of regret. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all from that. Enemy. Who took their religion as distraction and amusement and whom the worldly life deluded. So today we will forget them just as they forgot the meaning of this day of theirs and for having rejected our verses. So it's talking about clear cut, constant rejection. Okay. Constant rejection. It's not just like a, Oh, I heard it one and done, even though that may be the case for some people, right? 
uh, I mean, look, uh, the uncle of the prophet, Isa Salam, rejected it. This is the uncle of the prophet, man. I mean, you saw him. You saw, you were you were kicking it with him, Isa Salam, and you rejected it. And subhanAllah. And we had certainly brought them a book, uh, which we detailed by knowledge as guidance and mercy to a people who believe. Do they await, accept its result? The day, uh, the day its result comes, those who had ignored it before will say, the messengers of our Lord had come with the truth, and so are there now any intercessors to intercede for us, or could we be sent back to do other than what we used to do? They will have lost themselves, and lost from them is what they uh, used to invent. Indeed, your Lord Allah, uh, excuse me, indeed, your Lord is Allah, who created the heavens and the earth in six days and then established himself above the throne. Now, one thing to keep in mind here, uh, the, the, the Arabic term that's used here is uh, epochs. And the days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are not like the days of you and I. So he doesn't function in 24-hour days. You know, he's not in our closed system with our sun and living on our earth. Okay. So um, there's another there's another uh, section where it talks about, um, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, the duration of like the day of judgment and stuff, not in the Quran, I believe, but I believe it's in the Hadith where uh, uh, it is uh, like one day is like 50,000 years. And I have to please don't quote me on that for face value. Um, inshallah, you know, I'm just a little weary right now. So my memory is not the best. He covers the night with the day, another night chasing it rapidly. And he created the sun, the moon and the stars subjected by his command. Unquestionably, his his is the creation and the command blesses Allah, Lord of the worlds. Now, here's the deal. Yes, we can very easily read these words like the moon, the stars and the sun and, and so on. But remember just how massive the moon is. Remember how massive the sun is. Remember how massive some of these stars are that like put our sun to shame. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is basically telling you, I have dominion over these massive giant objects. And what makes you think that I don't have dominion over you kind of thing, right? So even though they're very easy words to read, um, you should take a moment to reflect on, on why he chose those words. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Call upon your Lord in humility and privately. Indeed, he does not like transgressors. So another characteristic of people that he doesn't like, disbelievers, transgressors, arrogant, unjust, yada, yada, yada. And cause not corruption upon the earth after its reformation. And invoke him in fear and aspiration. Indeed, the mercy of Allah is near to the doers of good. And it is he who sends the winds as good tidings before his mercy, which is the rainfall. In this context, the mercy is, is the rainfall until when, he, uh, when they have carried heavy rain clouds. And this is a miracle of the Quran, by the way. So it's, it um, claims that the rain clouds are heavy. The Prophet Aisam would not have known this um, by the look of clouds. Uh, because they're basically free floating in the air, it's uh, assumed that they are very light. But when they did the calculations, when modern science has conducted the calculations, rain clouds are incredibly, incredibly, incredibly heavy. Okay, so just keep that in mind. This is one of the miraculous um, uh, proofs. And uh, should you be inclined to research this, I encourage you just to just to go ahead and research it. Uh, we drive them to a dead land and we send down rain therein and bring forth thereby some of uh, some of all the fruits. Thus uh, will we bring forth the dead, perhaps you may be reminded. So the same way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to uh, provide rainfall and revive the dead land is the same way that uh, we as human beings are going to be revived. Um, and the good land, its vegetation emerges by permission of its Lord, but that which is bad, nothing emerges except sparsely, uh, except sparsely with difficulty. Uh, thus, thus do we diversify the signs for a people who are grateful. So gratitude is another uh, form of, of, of heading towards belief, gratitude. We had certainly sent Noah to his people, and he said, Oh, my people, worship Allah. You have no deity other than him. Indeed, I fear for you the punishment of a tremendous day. Said the eminent among his people, Indeed, we see you in clear error. Noah said, Oh, my people, there is not error in me, but I am a messenger from the Lord of the worlds. I convey to you the messages of my Lord and advise you, and I know from Allah what you do not know. 
then do you wonder that there has come to you a reminder from your Lord through a man from among you, and he may warn you that you may fear a law so, uh, so you might receive mercy. So here we go. Uh, fear is used as a tool in order for you to receive mercy. A lot of people are like thinking that it's, you know, punishment is bad, but punishment is not bad um, if it's used in the correct way, meaning you can use punishment to reform. You can use punishment to remind. You can use punishment to make aware. So like if you have a toothache, if somebody is going through like a reformation system, like they're trying to, they were like a really, really bad person. They're trying to get reformed back into society and they have to go do their time or community service and da, 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 da. So uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us here that fear is, a, is he's being used for mercy. But they denied him. So we saved him and those who were with him in the ship. And we drowned those who denied our signs. Indeed, they were a blind people. And remember, it's not the eyes that are blind, but rather the hearts. Meaning they were people that were so embedded in bad and, and absorbed all these bad habits that their hearts were sealed. Uh, and to the ad we sent their brother Hud. He said, oh, my people worship Allah. You have no deity other than him. Uh, you have no deity other than him. Then will you not fear him? Said the eminent ones who disbelieved amongst his people. Indeed, we see you in foolishness. And indeed, we think you are of the liars. Hud said, oh, my people, there is no foolishness in me, but I am a messenger from the Lord of the worlds. And notice the pattern here. The pattern is that the messengers are getting denied. So when we talk to people, especially to invite them to Islam, it's the same denial. It's the same denial, just repackaged, right? Oh, you're crazy. Oh, you're listening to fairy tales. Oh, this, that, and the third. But if only people would just be, be humble. I convey to you the message of my Lord, and I am to you a trustworthy advisor. Then do you wonder that there has come to you a reminder from your Lord through a man from among you? and that he may warn you. And remember, when he made you successors after the people of Noah and increased you in stature extensively, so remember the favors of Allah that you might succeed. They said, have you come to us that we should worship Allah alone and leave what our forefathers have worshiped? Again, common thread. Then bring us what you promised us if you should be truthful. So they're saying, show me a sign. Hud said, already, uh, said already have defilement and anger fallen upon you from your lord do not dispute with me concerning mere names you may, you have named them you and your fathers for which allah has not sent down any authority then await indeed i am with you uh, among those who wait so both of them are waiting okay but one of them is upon truth and now here is another cool golden nugget he says anger has upon, has fallen upon you from your lord so when you're going up against God, you're not, it's not just um, like materialistic things that are going to happen to you, right? Like you're not just going to be like, oh, there's a tornado. Oh no. You know, like it's, it's not like that. Rather, when your heart is sealed up and you become calloused, things are going to impact you more. You're going to start getting more ticked off. You're going to be irate. You're going to be depressed. You're going to be, you know you're not going to be in a state of good. So um, this is a, is a, is, you know, just the same way that fear is a weapon of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So is anger, right? So like all these different circumstances in life are going to be happening to you where you're, you're angry or you're fearful or you're depressed or whatever. So we saved him and those with him by mercy from us. And we eliminate, eliminated those who denied our signs and they were not at all believers. And to the Thamud, we sent their brother Saleh. He said, O oh my people, worship Allah. You have no deity other than him. There has come to you clear evidence from your Lord. This is the she camel of Allah sent to you as a sign. So leave her to eat within Allah's land and do not touch her with uh, harm, lest there seize you a painful punishment. So there was conditions. There was uh, conditions of, of what was happening. And remember, when he made you successors after the ad and settled you in the land and you take for yourselves places from its plains and carve from the mountains homes, then remember the favor of Allah and do not commit abuse on the earth spreading corruption. Said the eminent ones who were arrogant amongst his people to those who oppressed. 
arrogance, oppression, again, common threads, to those who believed amongst them. Do you actually know that Saleh is sent from his Lord? Meaning they're trying to invite you to their way. They're trying to get you like, yo, man, are you, are you like, okay? You know, are you like a brick short in your head? Um, how do you know for sure? They said, indeed, we in that, in that which he has sent our believers, meaning there was people that believed him. They said, yes, we're of sound mind, we're of sound body, and we believe him. Said those who were arrogant, indeed, we in that which you have believed are disbelievers, meaning whatever you believe, I definitely don't believe in. And why? Because I'm arrogant. And why? Because I'm oppressive. And why? Because yada, yada, yada. So they hamstrung the she camel and were insolent towards the command of their Lord and said, O Saleh, bring us what you promised us uh, if you should be of the messengers. So defiantly disobedient, arrogant, oppressive, challenging the word, insolent. Okay. Now they're saying, give me the consequence, you know, like prove it, bro. Okay, cool. So the earthquake seized them and they became within their home corpses, fallen and prone consequence. And, and he saw it turned away from them and said, Oh, my people, I had certainly conveyed to you the message of my Lord and advised you. Uh, but you do not like advisors, meaning the people that are here to give sincere advice. If somebody doesn't want to listen to sincere advice, they're not going to listen. And when he sent, uh, and when he sent lot, uh, and we had sent lot, who, uh, when he said to his people, do you commit such immorality as no one has preceded you with from among the worlds or i.e. the peoples? Indeed, you approach men with desire instead of women. Rather, you are transgressing people. So here we have the, you know, the acts of um, homosexuality, right? So the people are approaching, uh, men are approaching other men. But the answer of his people was only that they said, Evict them from your city. Indeed, they are men who keep themselves pure. Okay. So what was their excuse? Their excuse was, oh, well, we're not really like losing our virginity. So, you know, it's okay. Right. And this is just, it's just crazy, dude. It's absolutely crazy that Shaitan can twist somebody's thinking like this. Right. Um, actually, you know, what's so funny is now you have, uh, you have evidence is popping up where, like, for example, intermingling on, on certain in certain religions like Mormonism is forbidden. And they classified that the act of penetration had to be done by the person's own action. Right. So like if a man had uh, intercourse with a woman, the man had to be the one conducting the action. So what they did to circumvent it and to say, oh, we have still maintained our virginity is you have a friend kind of jump up and down on the bed and the other two people just kind of like are chilling there and they're not conducting their own actions. So it's okay. And it's mind blowing. It's absolutely mind blowing. Okay. But it, this is what it is. It's desperation. It's absolute desperation of trying to find something, you know, then listening to Shaitan. He found a weak point. So we have saved him and his family, except for his wife. She was uh, of those who remained with the evildoers. And we re rained upon them a rain of stones. Then he, he, then see how was the end of the criminals. And to the people of Midian, we sent their brother Shu'aib. He said, O oh, my people, worship Allah. You have no deity other than him. There has come to you clear evidence from your Lord. So fulfill the measure and wait. Uh, and do not deprive people of their due and cause not corruption upon the earth after its reformation. That is better for you if you should be believers. And notice this constant reformation, 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 messenger sent, reform, messenger sent, reform, messenger sent, reform. People screw up, people screw up, people screw up. I mean, it's just perpetual, perpetual mercy, right? Um, it, you know, uh, that is better for you if you should be believers. And do not sit on every path, threatening and averting from the way of Allah those who believe in him, seeking to make it seem deviant. And remember when you when you were few and he increased you and see how was the end of the corruptors. And if there should be a group among you who has believed in that with which I have been sent and a group that has not believed, then be patient until Allah judges between us. 
and he is the best of judges. So there you go. If you're dealing with a bunch of disbelievers and they're perpetually in their arrogance, cool, you know, talk about something else, I guess, but be patient because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to be the ultimate judge. Now, if they turn a sincere eye, meaning that they really start becoming sincere in their quest, obviously the doors to Islam are always open until somebody's passing, uh, then the doors are closed. Alhamdulillah, that is the end of the eighth juz, you guys. So thank you so much for bearing with me. So um, we're going to continue on tomorrow, inshallah, uh, with Surah Al-Araf on verse 88, um, inshallah. Uh, at this point in time, I want to say um, any mistakes that were from me is purely for me and the shaitan. Uh, and any mis- and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger are free from mistakes. So, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa Habibina Muhammad wa ala ali wa ashabi ala Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali wa ashabi Ibrahim fil alameen innaka hamid al-majid. Allahumma barak ala Sayyidina wa Habibina Muhammad wa ala ali wa ashabi ala Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali wa ashabi Ibrahim fil alameen innaka hamid al-majid. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to 